This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. Okay, as Jim said, we have a tradition, a wonderful one, of having students uh, from our school uh, give a talk about their GSPP and, and other experiences. Uh, and this particular person is actually GSPP and Berkeley through and through. Uh, our student speaker has the distinction of having an undergraduate degree from UC and being an alumnus of our public policy and international affairs program, which is a program that comes between the junior and senior year. It's for young people of promise who we think could be great public policy students, and we bring them in and we give them a taste of public policy, and the net result is a large fraction of those people go on to public policy or law, because it's also a program teaching them some about law. And it's been an enormously successful program in getting people who might not otherwise have thought about public policy uh, into our public policy program. So we're really thrilled that he was one of those. So, and I should say, by the way, that this program is supported by our board members and by our donors and would not exist and continue to exist. We've done it for over 30 years. And it's one of the programs that was one of the initial attempts to try to deal with the problem of preparing young people who come from minority and underserved communities uh, to learn about things like public policy and come into the public policy world. So we're really proud of this program and we thank you for helping to support it. Tonight, you'll see why in fact we think actually an undergraduate degree at Berkeley, the Public Policy and International Affairs Program and the MPP, the Masters of Public Policy Program at Goldman, is such a great set of programs and that we're so lucky to have a student tonight who can tell you about his experience. So welcome Van Nguyen. Thank you. So, you know, the last time I was in this room, I was taking a final in, uh, in, in that room over there, so I'm having a little post-traumatic uh, stress. <laughs> it's, a, it's a real honor for me to be here to uh, speak with you all today um, on behalf of the students at the Goldman School of Public Policy. Um, you know, I, I just gotta say that never in a million years could my parents have ever dreamt that I would be standing here at Cal um, just 26 days away from graduating with a master's in public policy. <laughs> and and it's, it's mostly because they had much bigger dreams for me as a kid. <laughs> and, uh, and they didn't know what a po public policy degree was. Um, you know, from time to time, uh, they asked me, you know, are you really sure you want to pursue this route? Um, you were really good at building Legos. Would you consider being an engineer? Uh, but, you know, it gives me an opportunity to kind of reaffirm uh, and answer to them, explain to them why I decided to come to Cal and pursue my master's in public policy. And, you know, I, I, I get it. You know, they're uh, Im immigrants from Vietnam. They came over here in 1975. Both of them didn't graduate from college. Um, and so they have a very narrow view of what success in America looks like. Um, there's two really important uh, lessons that I learned in that story. First, it's very difficult to please Vietnamese parents. Uh, but two, uh, I think it's really challenging for us and as students to explain what actually a public policy degree means and what it can bring. Uh, whether you're talking to people like my parents or your friends or a future employer. And when I think about it, um, it's pretty simple to me. Uh, Obtaining the skill set uh, that a public policy degree offers is, you know, I'll argue, more important today than it has ever been. Um, there's so much political noise in the public discourse right now um, where rational public policy debates aren't happening. Um, and people like the students that you're meeting tonight have the opportunity and the responsibility, in my opinion, 
to really cut through that noise and convey a vision and uh, a vision for how we can overcome the challenges that we faced uh, here in this world. You know, as Dean Brady mentioned, I went to Cal as an undergrad here. I'm very proud to be uh, a double bear. My, uh, my fiance, who I just proposed to last month, is a triple bear. <laughs> so she's constantly outdoing me. She's getting her master's in public policy and public health. Um, you know, but when I walked onto this campus, I fully subscribed to this notion that uh, that people, when they come together, particularly young people, that when they pool their resources, their talents, their energy together, that they can really accomplish anything. Um, and that's really woven deeply into the fabric of this university. Um, this idea really moved me to figure out opportunities that I can make the most impact in this world. And you know, when I was undergrad here, I ran for student body president, was elected student body president in 2007 and really had the coolest opportunity to uh, work directly with students, uh, faculty, and key decision makers on the administrative level on really important policy issues that will impact my generation for generations to come. And so we worked on issues like, how are we going to solve the problem of skyrocketing student fees and, and having students leave here uh, saddled with debt? You know, how are we going to provide an education for thousands of undocumented students that are pursuing the dream of higher education here in the state of California? You know, how are we going to make the doors of this university open and accessible to low middle income students and students of color that have historically not been a part of the process? And that was a really incredible experience, but it wasn't until I participated in uh, PPIA that Dean Brady had mentioned, uh, public policy and international affairs, that I really got to understand how I could maximize my impact um, as a leader and as someone that, uh, and as a change agent. You know, so PPIA is a program that's geared towards recruiting and retaining uh, mostly low income and uh, students of color to expose them to policy programs. And it was, it was then where I realized that you know, I could be really powerful and successful at creating change from the outside, but if I really wanted to make a difference, that I could craft and create policy from the inside as well. Um, that's where I got a glimpse of what my potential future could be. And so you know, the reality is my story in particular isn't all that special. It's, um, it's not unique in any way, shape, or form. It's just one story of many stories of students that are currently going here at the Goldman School of Public Policy. Um, and it's the story of students that are deeply committed, motivated, passionate, and once they leave the school, even better equipped to make the change that we desire to see in the world. Um, you know, what I find most impressive about the students um, that you're getting an opportunity to meet today, but the students that I get to work with every day, is that um, just simply obtaining the skills of public policy analysis isn't enough for these folks. Um, the skills of, you know, statistical modeling and memo writing and uh, things that you probably use on an everyday basis, am I right? Um, maybe not. Um, but it's not enough for uh, them because while all those skills are incredibly important, it's wholly inadequate to meet the challenges that we have today. Um, and so you might be wondering, wow, this, this guy is giving really high praise to his colleagues. What have they done to deserve that? Well, let me, if you will indulge me, let me give you a couple examples. You know, one of my peers has literally developed the business model to supply rural farmers in Mozambique with the uh, ability to charge their cell phones so that they can more effectively bring their crops to market, more effectively and efficiently bring their crops to market. And it's a policy that's being implemented by USAID right now. Another one of my, how many of you are, live in San Francisco? Okay, well this, listen up. Uh, one of my peers uh, has challenged the city of San Francisco to look at new strategies to uh, the best options to reduce the threat of post-earthquake fires when the, the big one hits in you know, 10, 15, 30 years. So you can thank him later for uh, doing that policy analysis. And just yesterday, a student that is actually here tonight organized a campus-wide debate on the impact 
of Stand Your Ground policies, um, which had over 200 people come to that event. Um, and the impact of those policies on young people of color in states uh, all across the country. So whether it's in politics or business, whether it's in uh, federal government or the not-for-profit sector, whether these students uh, stay here in the Bay Area, go to Washington, D.C., or go abroad, whether they're in the spotlight or doing a thankless, have, or have a thankless role uh, behind the scenes, Students here at the Goldman School of Public Policy are ready and equipped to lead. And so before I close, I just kind of want to leave you one last story. So I'm a healthcare policy guy. That's my focus, uh, area of focus. And uh, I worked in New York for four years uh, organizing physicians to, uh, against hospital closures in the outer boroughs of New York and uh, trying to rally support for healthcare reform. Um, and so, uh, you know, all the first year students have to do a summer internship uh, in between their first and second year. And my internship was at Accenture, a management consulting firm um, in the city, um, in their healthcare practice, which I just, uh, will, where I'll be starting uh, my full time work in July. Um, uh, we're all very happy to have jobs, yep. It's, um, so um, our client was um, a big health insurance company, um, and they were preparing to enroll hundreds of thousands of individuals on state exchanges in 14 different states. And so um, needless to say, it was a very intense summer. Um, there was, it was very chaotic um, trying to prepare for the enrollment period. Um, so my mom called me one, one evening, um, it was probably a Wednesday night, it was after one of these crazy 14 hour days, and she was just calling to check in on me and see how I was doing. I was in Louisville, Kentucky at the time. Um, and she called me and she said, oh, you know, how are you doing? I said, oh, it's been a tough week. Um, and then she began to ask the questions that she typically asks. So what is it exactly that you're doing this summer and have been doing for the last two years? And I'm like, Oh my gosh, she's going to try to convince me to go to pharmacy school or something. And, uh, <laughs> and you know, I was, I collected myself, I was trying to think of uh, a way to answer. And I simply told her, you know, mom, what I'm doing this summer and what I'm hopefully going to be doing in the future is helping to make sure that these exchanges work so that millions of people that previously went without health insurance because of a pre-existing condition or couldn't previously afford it can actually access it. Um, on uh, October 1st. And she's like, wow, that's really important. I said, yeah, that's really important. That's what I've been doing. And, um, and I think it struck my mom in particular because, you see, my, my dad uh, had two heart attacks before he was 43, before I was nine. And up until uh, October 1st, 2014, affordable health care coverage was out of reach for him and for the rest of my family. And so I think it particularly struck her, and I was so happy to hear her be happy for what I'm doing. Uh, and I realized that through it all, um, the reality is that it was this school, Cal, the Goldman School of Public Policy, and this degree that gave me a tangible way to make a difference um, in the world. And so in May, when I graduate with my colleagues, uh, with 81 of my fellow classmates, um, I couldn't be prouder to graduate from a, um, a more, uh, a more incredible institution as, um, as a Goldman School of Public Policy. Um, I w so I wanna just take a moment to thank you for all, all for being here tonight, um, for t continuing to support our school, for standing up for students at, um, and standing up for public policy, um, and for giving students like me um, an opportunity, a chance to uh, use our skills to do better in this world. Thank you. <laughs>